Good morning, guys. It is um, actually, uh, okay, yeah, it's about 5 till 10, so it's still still morning. Um, I was reading a little bit more of Phase 2 and went back to read more of the testimonies that I hand read off to you all, and the Holy Ghost directed me to just read the testimony. There's one short testimony and then one really nice testimony, which they're all great testimonies, all great testimonies. So instead of reading phase one and phase two, I'm just going to read the testimony. And let me go back first to uh, this one. Um, let's see. Okay. Deborah Stevenson Payne of Memphis, Tennessee. I came to the Ray Down workshop unsure of what was required or expected of me. I knew from our coordinator in the orientation video that it was a weight loss program, but beyond that, I didn't know much more. However, I was sure that if it involved God, I was willing to try. My sister often says that if this didn't work, nothing else could. She's right, and the scripture bears that out. John 15 B, John 15 5 B reads, Apart from me, you can do nothing. I have lost 38 pounds eating cheeseburgers and regular foods, and I've kept it off for one and a half years. I'm assuming those cheeseburgers included, included buns. Okay, now for me to read this to you. This is from Jill Bass, another Memphis, Tennessee. Now, the reason why a whole lot of these is from Tennessee is because it happens that Bryn Shamblin lives in Tennessee. But there's from other parts around the world. One here is a Gloria and Mary Cameron from Ontario, Canada. Anyway, so let's read a Jill Bass. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Seven years ago, I began my first diet and slowly but dramatically fell into an eating disorder that controlled my life. For the first two years, I was labeled as anorexic. I had mastered the art of starving and exercising. When self-control became impossible, as it always does in self-control, I became an exercise bulimic binging beyond control, then starving and exercising compulsively to control the weight. I tried vomiting. Praise God, that did, that did not work. I thought about food constantly. I weighed two and three times a day. I concentrated on what I was going to eat, and then after eating it, I focused on how I was going to starve or exercise to make up for it. I could consume more food in one sitting. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> than I ever dreamed I could, then eat nothing for one or two days and exercise for hours. Anything that interfered with this pattern irritated me terribly. My life revolved around this simple cycle. I am convinced now that I was in bondage to sin and the enemy. Although a Christian, I had closed my eyes to the sin that enveloped me. I was so focused on am proud of controlling this weight myself. What real power I had, how thin I was, how enslaved I was. I tried everything, low fat, no fi fiber, eat more, weigh less, what garbage. I even sought secular therapy and Christian therapy when I finally realized that I was on a downward spiral. <coughs> Why sometimes those morning frogs don't want to come right out. Praise God for the parting of the sea. He prepared me for the Ray Down workshop by bringing me to the breaking point. I no longer wanted to be controlled by this disorder. I cried out to him. He led me to Ray Down in an amazing way. I then heard an ad on the radio and called the 800 number to see if there was a session on the one night that I could make it. There was, starting the next night. 
I knew then that this was it. I was packing my bags to leave Egypt. But boy, did I underestimate Radon. This was much more than biblical truths to help me apply secular principles. This was God's way of eating. One awesome creator. Once I recognized the patterns of my behavior for what they were, sin, I was on the way to the promised land. After the first session, I knew this was the answer to the binging and starving. What I did not know is that God had something in mind that I had never imagined. He wanted to deliver me from another bondage as well, compulsive exercise. I now see that this controlled my life even more than the excessive food or the deprivation of food. I never thought I could give up exercise. That is how I controlled my rate and my sin. For seven years, I exercised strenuously for over one hour, five to seven times a week. I revolved my days around getting to aerobics. Trips were major stresses because I had to give up my exercise. It has been seven years <clears throat> since I enjoyed a vacation. The longest I had ever gone without exercise was seven days. That was when I had to go to Hawaii five years ago. Each day was spent worrying about missing exercise and gaining weight. I recently skipped 10 days of exercise without worrying one bit. In fact, God is working dramatically in this area, and I find myself fitting exercise in every now and then. Now I exercise because it helps me to sleep and feel better, not because it is my method of controlling my weight. My method for that is to obey God's created signals. He will control my weight. At first, I was very fearful of this program. Satan told me that if I obeyed God and didn't do this myself, I would get fat. I did not need to lose any weight, but Satan had me fearing I would gain weight, especially if I did not exercise. But God's word tells me that every good gift is from him. He desires to give good things to his children and reward those who seek him. For weeks, I craved nothing but sweets when hungry because I had deprived myself for years. Now I let myself eat, re eat what I want. I still cannot get enough carrot cake. I often need a small piece for lunch. For a while, I ate a donut for breakfast daily, but now I am back to craving cereal. I'm amazed at the small amounts I am eating. It is so much more satisfying to eat one donut than a huge bowl, double serving of fat-free oatmeal. Half of a burger and a few fries is great compared to a gigantic, plain, baked potato with a plate full of broccoli. I love realizing that God wants me to enjoy eating. He just wants me to eat within his boundaries, which are set up to keep me at the right rate. And that rate is not fat. I love not being stuffed and I love feeling true hunger. I feel like I am discovering these joys for the first time. Most of all, I love the fellowship with the Father that I am experiencing as I grow in obedience and love for Him. I have lost some weight. I am at the rate that I hope to maintain. I believe God allowed me to lose a little to confirm his goodness and grace. He miraculously delivered me from head hunger. He is still working with me on stopping, but he is teaching me mercifully in the desert. So I am completely prepared to live in the promised land, free of binges, perches, and compulsive exercise. My jewelry chest is full of jewels. The biggest is actually having a life that does not revolve around the aerobic schedule. I truly believe that God has even seen to it that other things were happening when I would have gone to aerobics. He often even said to me, don't go to aerobics. Go home and spend time with me. I did it. That is a jewel. And guess what? I did not gain an ounce by not going. I love feeling normal in my eating. Going out to lunch and dinner is no longer a battle, but a joy. I even schedule both lunch and dinner out in the same day without concern. Before, this was a nightmare because I could consume more than a day's worth of food at one sitting, especially if going out to eat. 
and other jewel is having my marriage back. I have only been married for three years. I hit the lowest point of my food exercise sin during the first year. I have been consumed with food, exercise, etc. for our entire marriage. Praise God for a godly husband who has understood and supported me. I believe that now God has given me an opportunity to be the wife he calls me to be. How often I blamed this wonderful man for my problems and how often he suffered both personally, socially, and emotionally because of me. Obedience is another jewel. I am focusing so much more on obeying God in all areas of my life. In doing this, I have received peace and rest. God is such a personal, unique God, and he has often given me personal rays of escape and nudges to obedience that are just between him and me. How awesome that he wants to be personal with me, an unfaithful sinner. He also wants to take the time to train and correct me. I have grown to value this and not neglect his teaching. I have come to know him better as Father in his compassion, mercy, and desire to spend time with me as Son in, let's see, I have come to know him better as Father in his compassion, mercy, and desire to spend time with me as Son in his forgiveness, resurrection, and power over sin, and as the Holy Spirit in guidance, conviction, and peace. All of these jewels are for choosing His path. I praise God for His timing in leading me to the WDW. His timing is perfect. I praise Him now for the years of suffering. Our precious God even turns our sin around for His glory. What a master over Satan. I can hardly contain this victory. I know there are many women out there with eating disorders and exercise compulsions, which is sin. I hope that I will be able to share God's victory with them. Though the bulimic or anorexic woman has a very different compulsion than the overweight woman, her victory comes from the same place, our mighty resurrected Lord. Praise God, hallelujah. Even disorders, guys. I would run testimony where a woman was becoming an alcoholic. And uh, she went to the Ray Down, and God delivered her from alcohol. And uh, she said that since then she had only ordered one wine, one glass of wine, drank half of it, and hasn't touched another drop since. So God works in every area of our life, every area. And all we got to do is just trust Him, turn to Him, give Him all the praise and glory, and let Him teach us and train us the way that he had created us to do from the day of birth. You know, someone had once commented that a baby was born ketogenic. That babies are born ketogenic. Um... And another one said, that's right. But, you know, I've thought about that comment. And, you know, that would be like saying that a baby is able to eat just anything. And no. A baby has to drink nothing but milk until its digestive system finishes developing. And then it can be introduced to other foods. It's not born uh, doing keto. It's not born in a ketogenous state. It has no choice but to drink only but milk. You can't. You can't start feeding a baby solid foods. And, and flavorful foods, its digestive system isn't fully developed yet. So, you know, and that statement was completely Bologna. Bologna. I don't even know who those people were that said that, but yeah. You, you can't go by how a baby is born 
to base your life on a certain kind of diet. You can't. A baby has no choice but to drink buck milk. No choice. It's not ready for other foods and solid foods. Sorry, folks. Unless, of course, you want to go straight to drinking uh, formula and nothing else in your life. You want to do that, go on ahead, give it a shot. Have you ever tasted that stuff? It's horrible. It even shows that a baby's uh, taste buds isn't developed yet or it would spit it out as soon as it tasted it. So, uh, yeah. Unless you want to uh, just eat straight way the way a newborn eats, uh, you can't use a baby as an example for a certain diet. Sorry. Um, you know, I was wanting to uh, challenge you all, and I was going to wait until the end of 90 days to give you the challenge, but I think I'm going to challenge you now. I'm going to challenge you two ways. Either give Ray down a shot for 30 days. I've read you enough. You know what to do. You know to listen for your true hunger and stop when you're satisfied, not when you're overstuffed. And eat whatever it is that you really like. And of course, if you don't want to eat a certain food, then don't your choice your choice not because the rules is you can't but it's your personal choice not to and that you give it all over to God every bit of it trust every single bit of it to God and don't look back but just give it to him daily talk to him daily turn to him daily asking him to help you and give you strength to only pay attention and eat within your hunger zone and not in between hunger and not night binging. Just completely give it over to him. That's challenge number one. Or challenge number two, where you keep on the diet plan that you're on right now and you don't overeat. Don't overeat. Don't you dare. Now, mind you, you're going by man-made rules. You're going by the man-made rules. 30 days, y'all. 30 days. Going by man-made rules on whatever diet plan you're on. It doesn't matter if you're vegan, vegetarian, paleo, South Beach, Mediterranean, keto. I don't care what plan you may be on. Okay? Any plan. Any plan. I don't care. For 30 days... You rely only on your hunger zone. Do not eat to overstuff. And of course, you're depriving yourself of the foods because man says you can't eat. And um, you're not allowed to do any binging, not even by accident. Don't you dare even accidentally binge. You gotta do this on your own willpower because you're following man-made rules with your specific plan. So don't you dare even bend. You gotta rely on your own willpower. You're not giving it over to God. Hmm. You're not giving it over to God. You're just relying on man and his moot and his rules. So no binging, no binging. You gotta do this on your own willpower. And let's see how much weight is lost in the 30 days. Now, I can promise you that only going with the hunger zone and not eating in between and not binging, you will actually lose a lot of weight, seriously. I promise you. But the difference will be how much real power do you have. Now, mind you, you are eating restrictive. Only what is allowed in the dietary rule book for this specific diet plan you're on. Mind you. Or the Ray Down. 
that you can eat anything you like within the hunger zone. Anything that your body might be crying out for. You heard me read what that one said. And that for a long time, whenever she was hungry, all she desired was sweets. Because she had deprived herself so much and she ate it. Okay? And that was putting herself into reverse. Which is just as difficult as trying to lose weight. When you've gone onto a control freak binge where you are controlling your weight and you're not wanting to gain an ounce, you ain't about to eat what you actually desire. You're going to fight it tooth and nail and not put it down your body. But she did. She went into reverse and still lost a little bit more weight because she trusted God. So that's the challenge. That's the challenge. And I am in this challenge too. Remind you, I'm on a blind, non-clinical trial of the way down. And uh, day 90 is coming up. And I am eating anything I like. I am eating candies. I am drinking sodas. I am drinking coffee with cream and sugar. I am eating carbs, including noodles. Uh, I am eating anything I enjoy. French fries, tater tots, pizza rolls. Anything I enjoy. I'm even going to the peach rave that a dear sweet sister of mine said I shouldn't be going to because it's got so much sugar in it. I'm even going to go to Baskin Robbins whenever me and my husband decides. Of course, I'm only going to eat it if I'm hungry and not in between hunger zone. It's not going to be a binge. It's going to be a pleasure because I'm going to be eating it within my hunger zone and not outside of it. So yeah, I'm in this challenge too. So it's man's rules versus God's way. I'm not saying who loses the most. I'm saying who's got the more control. Are you going to be able to keep from eating in between meals and keep from night binging, morning binging, lunch binging, whatever it is that you'd always had the problem? Are you going to be able to keep from doing that for 30 days? 30 days, complete 30 days, through your own willpower, using man-made rules. Which means you can't have a certain duh, 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 duh. And are you going to feel energetic? Oh, and the most biggest rule of all, no, 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 zero, 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 no exercise whatsoever. And that's my challenge to you. So, either give the Ray Down and God a 30-day chance and see what happens for you. And no exercise either. No, no exercise, because I'm not exercising. No exercise. No exercise. But you give the ray down a 30-day trial where you completely and solely trust God, completely and solely eating anything that you want when you're hungry, when you're hungry, and not in between your hunger zone and not as a binge, only when you're hungry, completely trusting God. And as I said, if there is something that you want to not eat, not because man says you can't, but because you don't want to eat it. Trust God. Trust God. Give it over to him and trust him, and he will give you strength. I promise you. I have decided I really don't want to eat chips because I don't trust myself with chips. And guess what? The Holy Ghost helps me to not have chips because I prefer just not to. I'm allowed to eat them if I want. God isn't telling me I can't. I can have them if I want. 
but I'm choosing not to. I'm choosing not to. It's my choice, not man-made and not God. I'm choosing, and the Holy Ghost is backing me up because it's my choice. So if there's something you don't want to eat while you're giving God and the way down a 30-day trial, trust him and he will help you to not eat it. No exercise. Just completely trusting him and eating whatever you want. So if you had been on a diet that refrains you from eating breads, go on ahead and eat bread. If you actually want to eat bread, if you, if you have found yourself drooling over bread every time you saw somebody eat it, even if it's just one piece of a dinner roll and your mouth drools and you turn it away because man-made rules on the plan you're on says no. Nope. But you want that bread so bad. Eat it within the hunger zone. And trust God. Trust God. Trust God. Okay? Or stay with your man-made rule. With no exercise. All the food restriction that the rule has given you. And only eat within the hunger zone. And you're not allowed to eat in between. And no not binges. As I said, it isn't necessarily a challenge to see uh, how much weight is lost. Because I guarantee you, you will lose weight as long as you only eat inside of the hunger zone. That's a guarantee. The real test is the real power. That's the real test. Giving it all completely to God, you've got God's power. Trusting completely in the plan that you're on, you're using real power. So the real challenge is how much strength have you got in yourself using man-made rules. I have been filming what I eat I have been showing you every food I eat. I've been showing you. And I have not ate without the hunger with without of the hunger zone. I haven't overstuffed myself within the hunger zone. And I haven't done any binging. For me, the binging always come up before bed. I haven't done any not binging. I haven't even desired to. I'm only eating when I'm hungry and stopping when I'm satisfied and nowhere in between and after. And I'm just completely relying on God the Father. It's through God the Father. It's not my own willpower. It's through the strength of the Holy Spirit and completely trusting Him. I haven't had any chips because I'm not wanting any. I'm not wanting to give myself a chance and when I am completely confident in myself, then I might eat some. Might. But honestly, for the time being, I don't want none. I honestly don't. I don't want any. I could name off a type of chip, and I just don't want it. I don't want it. Uh, my favorite had always been the baked sour cream and cheddar. No one then. My second favorite was Doritos nachos. No one any. No one any. Now when me and my husband goes to a Mexican restaurant, I'll eat me a couple chips in the dip. He likes to order queso. One particular restaurant that we go to has got a very good salsa. Very good. And I don't like salsa. But this salsa has got a really good flavor. And I'll eat me a couple chips. Just two, three, while I'm waiting for my meal. And that's it. We don't go there that often. So, yeah. Those are the two challenges. Like I said, I'm in the challenge too using only the way down and trusting in God's power. So, man's man-made way or God's way? 
Your choice. One or two. You'll not fail with the ray down, I promise. But there is a very high percentage chance that you will with man-made. So, that's it. So, I hope that you got that straight. No exercise. And if you go with man-made, you have to rely on your own willpower for 30 days not to accidentally binge or eat beyond your full mark. Got to trust in your own willpower. And of course, I know that you're doing food restrictions. I know you are. And it'd be nice to know how much weight you lost too. That would be interesting to know how much weight you lost because I'm going to tell you something, no matter what plan that you may be on, whether or not you do ray down or you do man-made, I wish you all the best. I want you to lose weight and I want to see you healthy. I'm in no means even trying to curse you or bring you down. I'm not doing that. I'm just putting you to a challenge. Trust man-made's rules, man-made rules, or trust God's way. No exercise. Your own willpower or God's power. That's the choice. And that's my challenge. Uh, this is day 70. So that gives you 20 more days. But um, seeing that I'm not given this challenge from the first of the 30 days, even though for me, my blind non-clinical trial is done, I'm still going to be doing the way down, but on day 90, that's when I reveal how much rate had been lost. And um, through you know, seeing what I ate. And for you all, uh, it would be on uh, my day 100 that your challenge is over. My challenge is over on day 90 because I already know. I already know. But your challenge would be over on day 100. On day 100. So, that's my challenge. One or two. Do you pick curtain number one or curtain number two? Curtain number one, going on ahead and trusting the way down with God. Or curtain number two, sticking with your own plan. With no exercise and no binging. So, anyway, that is all I've got to say for today, and I love yens, <laughs> even though I gave you this challenge, and this is just mostly as an eye-opener. I would hope that you would choose to give the way down a your own personal challenge, your own personal trial, because I think after 30 days, I seriously believe you'd be sold. I really do. And you would be so much more satisfied, I promise. Seriously, more satisfied. Because not only are you finally getting to enjoy life again. And seriously enjoy life again. Because you're not having to count, weigh, buy certain foods. Uh, come up with these uh, diet plan friendly concoction recipes. And blah, blah, blah. You actually have the freedom with the ray down. You've got the freedom. I promise you've got the freedom. You can even eat processed foods. I know for a lot of you that's a oh, but no. I promise you can even eat processed foods. That's all I've been eating is processed foods. And as Bryn said, anything you buy in the store has been processed in some way or fashion because it has to be in order to be shipped to the store. So, believe it or not, unless you're growing your own food and you're butchering your own meat, guess what? It's been processed. <laughs> anyway, 
You've got that freedom if you go to the Radan. You've got that freedom. All chains of man-made rules, bondage will be broke. And you'll feel the freedom. And 100% guarantee, as long as you're putting your trust fully and completely in God, 100% guarantee, you will lose even without exercise. Guaranteed, 100%. So the choice is yours. I love you guys. I will see you in tomorrow. Have a great day.